So, piano. This is, I'm gonna give you all the secrets of piano playing. It's just, there's not gonna be anything that uh, I'm gonna leave out because the play's too short to, to mess around with this kind of thing. So, you know, the thing with piano is that you've got quarter notes, you have half notes, you have eighth notes. Quarter notes are, let's actually use a metronome here. So metronome clicks, does that. Um, if I turn it on, you can hear it. I don't want it to be too loud here, but. So that's, um, so you turn the dial and it tells you the number of beats per minute, okay? So this is, gets slower and this is faster, okay? This is the most useful device ever invented. People don't use them anymore because they use their phones. And phones have metronomes. You can get a metronome app, but the problem is that they're so cumbersome to use that nobody uses them. So the metronome has gone out of style and eventually they'll stop making the apps because nobody will be expecting a metronome anyway. Uh, metronomes are used a lot by brass players and um, because they want to um, have an excuse when when they're playing with a pianist and the pianist and, and, and they're not, you know, brass players always has have... They always play music that's way too difficult for them, and so they want somebody to blame when it doesn't go well. So they point to the pianist and say, well, I told you it was 61 beats per minute, and you played at 60, so it's obviously your fault. Uh, so metronomes are really useful because they click, and they don't lie to you, okay? It's just this mechanical device. It's electronic somehow. I don't know exactly how they work. Um, it says quartz metronome. That must be an indicator somehow of what's going on inside. I guess it's running on crystals. Who to thunk? The thing with uh, metronome is like you can just play. See, it's like right. So it's like I can be in tempo and I have to be in tempo because if I'm not, then it's like I'll hear it. I'll hear that it's out of sync. That's amazing. Um, it's like it's just right there telling you you suck, you suck, you suck. And you can play anything like that, okay? Now, a quarter note is like, it's a, called a quarter note because it's a quarter of a whole note, okay? And you play, a whole note is just like four quarter notes, okay? It's this really circular thing, it doesn't make any sense, and you don't have to even think too hard about it. You just have to know that a whole note is four quarter notes, or a quarter note is just one click, if I'm saying that a click is a quarter note. But see, if I go faster, then maybe the quarter note's faster. Now, an eighth note's half a quarter note, so there's two quarter eighth notes and a quarter note. I'm saying this stuff because it's important to really understand that this is the foundation of music. Because if you don't understand this, then you don't have anything. But nobody wants to talk about this because this is stuff that kids learn. Blah, 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 blah. So eighth note is, there's two eighth notes and a quarter note. So it's like, uh, uh, so these are quarter notes. Okay, then like, those are eighth notes. You see I'm playing two of them. Eighth notes are not twice as fast as quarter notes. Notes don't have speeds. Notes are a point in time. Okay, there's no speed to it. It's a point. It's like it's one dimensional thing. There's no uh, no speed at all. You can't have speed for notes. It's like a car has a speed as it's going down the road. Okay, it's like distance uh, divi divided by time. That's your speed. What what does that have to do with notes? Notes don't have that. Okay, so you see like the metronome. It's like a click. That's why I like it because it's a click and you, there's like a, a definite point in time where it is and that's when you play a note, okay? Then you can make it match up. You can have it occur simultaneously at the exact same point in time. Uh, radical acceptance is really important. You know, you have to have self-acceptance. Everything you do is right. You are love and you are, uh, you are just, you are peace and, and you are God, okay? Um, the, the, that's radical acceptance. It's uh, crystals are wonderful. They power the metronome, and I love crystals because they can manifest wonderful things like money. If you if you just believe in it, you just believe in the money, then it will appear. See, these are eighth notes. Why do I say eighth notes? Because there's eight of them in a whole note. And it's half, uh, an eighth is half of a quarter. So there's two quarter notes, two eighth notes, okay, in, 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 in between 
So I, if, if I'm playing a quarter note on each click, then you see there's going to be two eighth notes in the same amount of time. Okay, now you have 16th notes, which are going to be like there's 16 of them in a whole note, and there's going to be 16 is a quarter of a quarter. So there's going to be four 16th notes in the amount of time that I was playing to, uh, one quarter note. And so... Those, those four, the money, the money is the most important thing. Money is like, money is what makes the world go round, okay? And money is the root of all evil. So you kind of have like, it's, there's a lot going for it, okay? So if, you, if you're into evil the way that I am, then money is really the thing for you. Those are 16th notes. And notice how there's two sixteenth notes in the amount of time that it took me to play two eighth notes. Four sixteen, two sixteenth notes in the amount of time it took me to play one eighth note. So if these are, so th so watch. So if this is an eighth note, these are eighth notes. Okay, watch. Now these are sixteenth notes. But Michael, what just happened? That sounded like you were doing quarter notes and eighth notes. Why are you calling those eighth notes and sixteenth notes? So look, you're gonna have to figure that out. It's just basic mathematics, okay? There's also triplets, okay? And those are like if you have like three of them instead of, yeah, destiny. If you have three of them and then you have two, so like da 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 da. da. See, there's like three. Okay, those are triplets. So you can play music, and you play music with quarter notes, okay? These are quarter notes. You can't see my left hand because of the microphone. Is that my left hand? Yes, it is. See, this is another great thing about not using the, uh, the Instagram app is that on the Instagram app, it mirrors the thing. Wait a minute. No, it's mirroring it here too. Damn it. There's got to be a way to flip that around. Uh, I don't know. Okay. You're going to have to use your imagination, I guess, right? Is this right? Does this look right? No, it doesn't, right? This is a mirror. That's what you're seeing, right? No, you're not. Wait, I can't tell. I'm confused. I'm confused. I think it looks right. Yeah, right? It does. Wonderful. I'm trying to get this all out so quickly because if I die tomorrow, I could get hit by a bus. Anything could happen. Who knows? And then this is all going to be gone. And here will be there once and for all on the record. This, these are quarter notes. I actually have a course. It's called Mindful Piano Basics, and I did that. Um, I did that last year, and it's just I have the first module of the course. It's like 13 lessons, and I was going to explain all this stuff in the course, and I was going to sell it and make a lot of money, but nobody cared. Well, a couple people cared, but it, you know, I don't know. It really sucked because I was just being really polite the whole time, and I wasn't really doing anything good. That was before I was called manipulative and dangerous by a professor at the university. That's the, and then I was called in to talk to the department head and the dean. dean. It's kind of like a Lindsay Shepard kind of situation, but it wasn't as bad as that. They were actually very reasonable. It wasn't a really a problem, but that kind of thing happens to me way too often. These are quarter notes. And you can play at any tempo. So triplets is like when you have three babies, exactly. And when you have four babies, they call them 16th. See, same quarter, they're quarter notes. You can go really fast. Those are 16th, those are whatever they're called. Quarter notes, right? So right here, you see it's at 150, whatever. I can't tell because it's all scratched. It's 152 beats per minute, okay? So the thing goes up to 208. That's the highest number on the metronome. And I recommend that you use the whole metronome. A lot of people don't want to do that because, you know, it's like you think it's like the speed limit on your car or something on the speedometer, wherever it shows you that you're not going to go as fast as it goes because that's illegal. You're going to get pulled over and you're going to actually probably throw you in jail if you're going that fast. But 
you can't. That's not going to be uh, a problem with the metronome. It's it's not. It's just a quartz metronome. Like they're not going to. The police don't care about this. The piano police might care, but you don't have to worry about them. It's they're all bark and no bite, really. I mean, they kicked me out of one of the piano groups on Facebook because I, I you know, I, I said something. I didn't say piano teachers suck. It was something like that. I don't know what it was. But they just love that. They love that kind of thing. So here we are again with these, whatever they are, these, this is the lowest number. It's actually not 40. 40 is the lowest number. 40 beats per minute. So the thing with like a metronome, and the thing is that it's a click and there's a light. You see there's a light that goes... Every time it clicks, there's a light. It's a red light. It doesn't look red on the screen. It looks white, I think, but it's red. And the thing is that there's like, uh, you can't really tell this, but there's like a swing that happens, okay? Every every beat. And the thing is that in your body, you can feel that, okay? Because that's how you would know. That's how you can predict when the next beat is going to happen. It's like when you're walking, you know. You know how to time your steps because you just know that if I don't step at the right time, then I'm going to fall over. I'm going to trip, trip over myself. So you have to do that, you know? That's how you feel the rhythm in your body. And you do that with music too. And everybody does this. You don't have to be a trained musician to do this. Everyone does it because you listen to the radio, whatever, and you tap your foot along with it. So so I don't want to hear this. Like some people say, well, I'm bad at rhythm. I, you know, whatever. Go away. Get out of my life. Because, you know, you you people, that's just, a, that's just some weird excuse. Okay, eighth notes. You can play with eighth notes. Now, this is too slow. That was my point, because this is too slow. You know, it's just too slow, especially because I'm in a hurry right now. Like, I'm trying to get all this information out there, so I don't have patience for that. So I'm just going to go to, like, 84. So eighth notes. Now, the thing is that how do you play this? Okay, this is the most important thing. The way that you play the piano, and what you can see that I've been doing, maybe you can hear it because I'm really kind of exaggerating, is you just drop your hands onto the piano. Okay, it's like you take your arm like this and you drop it. Okay, it's like up and then drop it. So the gravity kind of just like pulls it down like that. It's just this momentary thing. It's like happens right at one point. Okay, one point in time. And you want to kind of time it so that the thing lands with the click, so that the sound coincides with the click. So that means you have to like drop like a little bit earlier. But if you're going to sit there and like obsess over that, then I, there's no hope for you. No hope at all. You're going to have to, I maybe can give you some crystals that might help, but I can't help you because you have bigger issues. You have serious psychological problems. What I'm telling you is you just take the click, you see the sound, and you make it so that the sound coming out of the piano coincides with the sound coming out of the metronome. It's just a very simple thing. It's like you take two puzzle pieces and you fit them together, or you take like a key and you put it in a lock. It's just like, you know, I don't know. You take your hand and you reach out and grab the thing. Like, it's just like these two things in space, the real things, and you just make them make them work. It's not that complicated, okay? So... This is eighth notes you play. There's two of them for every click. What I'm doing here is I'm just playing, I'm just making up whatever. I'm just playing random notes. You can, you can, if you, you know, depending on what kind of, you know, personality you have, you might want to do something that's similar, or you might want to just like, you can do a scale or something. But you see, what I'm doing is that every time there's a click, this is the really important part, is that every time there's a click, I'm dropping my hand on the piano. Okay? That's the thing. And it doesn't matter what I play in between the clicks. That's not the point. So this exercise is you want. This is, by the way, this is called core, core, mu core music. That's what I'm going to call it. What I'm saying right now is not necessarily consistent with what you're going to hear from other teachers of music, other teachers of classical music or any other kind of music. I invented my own kind of music today. I'm calling it core music, which is just to go along with core meditation and Corman yoga. I would have core yoga, but that sounds like something else. So I'm just going to call it Corman yoga. There's going to be core music and there's going to be core meditation. And I'll have some other things too. But in core music, uh, this is how it works. These are the rules. Okay, it's set by the uh, the Lord on high. That's me. We don't have uh, the composers like Beethoven and Mozart and all those guys. Those are not 
gods within the core music system. In the normal music system, they are, okay? But in core music, it's a little different. So just, just keep in mind those differences because they're subtle, but I'll point them out as we go along. Now you can do 16th notes also, okay? So you're gonna do four notes. Only important thing, the most important thing is that your arm is going to drop on the keyboard at every click. So it's for me, it's like the tempo doesn't go faster. It sounds like it's faster, right? So it's like if I play, that sounds slow and then That sounds faster. It's not faster. It's not four times faster. It's absolutely not. It's the same exact tempo, okay? Because you see it's just click, 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 click. It's the same tempo. I want to know about the role of capitalism in core music. There's not, it, this is, this has nothing to do with capitalism. It's not about that, okay? I can understand the confusion because we want to make money and i was talking about money before but there's no capitalism it's not about that the, the, the money in core music money is only a means to an end it's just so we we have money so that we can buy stuff like for example we can buy computers we can buy phones we can buy um we can buy equipment to stream on instagram okay so that we can do more of this kind of thing we don't in capitalism the idea is that you want to collect money so that you can have a lot of money and then you can um you can do capitalist things but that's not what we're doing here okay it's just here it's just about um just having money so that we can buy stuff f for our own use okay i hope that cl clarifies the distinction now so i think i've covered most of most of the basics here is that now, what, what, I've, what I've told you so far is enough to play uh, pretty much any piece of classical music, okay? Uh, I covered quarter notes, I covered um, eighth notes, I covered sixteenth notes, I talked a little bit about whole notes. I didn't uh, demonstrate whole notes, but I think you can infer. I mean, the, I'll do it, you know, a whole note is going to be four clicks, okay? So it's like one, two, three, four, one two so those are hold notes okay now in normal classical music there's something called counting okay in core music we don't count we just uh, we just we just play one note every four clicks okay so you, you you're just counting the clicks but you're not counting the note okay so in normal music you count the notes you play okay that leads to insanity that makes people go insane and crazy and and it makes them very angry and it ties their body into knots. And in chord music, we want to untie knots. That's the idea. It's a little different, okay? Classical music, you want to tie knots. In chord music, you untie the knots. Same basic idea, but it's just totally the opposite. How does socialism fit in? Um, socialism is... Socialism is similar to capitalism, um, but it's more social. So everybody uh, just, you don't really have rights. You don't have, uh, you don't have possessions. Everybody owns everything else. So people can just come and take your stuff if they want. Uh, really, the government owns everything. So the government can uh, do whatever they want with you. It's kind of like Instagram. It's like Instagram is the government where they can do whatever they want. If they want to save your life, they can. If they want to throw it in the trash, they can do that too. That's kind of like socialism. I imagine that's how it is in Canada, for example, which is a socialist country to the north of the United States. Now you have half notes, which are two clicks, okay? Now let me show you some music. See, this is music, okay? This is this is by J.S. Bach, who is one of the great gods of classical music. And in, in core music, he's just considered a, a composer. He's not a god, so uh, it's not. It, you'll get the hang of it. Now, the thing is, okay. So, look. 
Okay, this is a bad example because, well, it's not a bad example. I'm just going to do it. Look, see, I don't know if you can see it. I think you can see it. So you see, see it says, what does it say? 12-8, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, okay. 12-8, that's a time signature. It means there's eight, there's 12 eighth notes in the measure, okay? And you see how they're grouped into threes? Okay, so that's how you, that's how you, that's how you're going to play it. Okay, so the 12 eight, this is you use, uh, you use, I, 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 I'll print out a core music a cheat sheet at some point. And what it tells you is that there's going to be four beats in the measure. And each beat is going to, there's going to be three notes in between each beat. Okay, and those notes are eighth notes. That's the way it's written on the page. So the way you play that is like, there's going to be like three. So you have like one, da, da, da. okay, so there's like three in between each click. Now what you can do, let me demonstrate this here. If you take, you take, let's go a little bit faster. Like, so if I play one, okay, so you see there's like, I'm playing one eighth note per click. Now what I, okay. What I told you before is that there's going to be like you have eighth notes and quarter notes and stuff. When you're in 12-8, it's a little bit different because you're going to count everything in terms of threes rather than twos. I said count. I don't mean count in the classical music sense. I just mean count in the normal sense, like the normal English sense of count where you're just going to count things. Okay. I don't mean, I'm not talking about the, the religious ritual that they do in classical music that they call counting, which ties knots. We're trying to untie the knots. So we're just, it's just like one, two. Okay. Or one, two, three. It's very simple. You just don't think too hard about it, because it could it could cause severe. Uh, you could have a serious problem. You could you could start to it could cause a lot of anger, really, when you realize how much uh, people have really screwed you over in your life. So this is like I'm playing one click per eighth note, okay? Now, because we're in 12-8, I'm gonna, it doesn't really make sense to do two notes per click because that's kind of the wrong thing, okay? It's like we're doing it in threes instead of twos. So what I wanna do is I wanna do like, I wanna, I wanna be thinking the next one is gonna be in terms of threes, okay? So without even changing the tempo here, without changing the thing on the metronome, I'm gonna go up to three notes, okay? But you see how what I said before about how I drop my arm on the keyboard every time. So what I'm going to do now, what I was doing, what I was doing before is I drop my arm on the keyboard once per click. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do once every three clicks. Now you may you may have noticed that I played a wrong note in there. I don't know if you noticed it. But see, in normal classical music, when you play a wrong note, what you do is you stop, you have like a embarrassed look on your face and you kind of stutter a little bit and you're playing and you hope nobody noticed, but you know they noticed. And so you kind of like, it's you have, you have to kind of apologize for it. If you don't apologize for it, the teacher will think that you didn't notice that you played a wrong note and they'll get really upset. In core music, we don't do that. Uh, what we do is we just, we don't care, okay? It's like whatever, because you know, Everybody knows, I mean, even in normal classical music, you know, that when you play a wrong note, you know that you played a wrong note. It's not like anybody needs to point it out to you. So in core music, we just, we just accept it. This is what I said about radical acceptance. It has, it's about the crystals and the, and the manifesting. All these terms for rhythmic values must be so confusing for beginners. Yes, they're extremely confusing because it's all based on fractions, which is higher mathematics. Uh, I, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to find a way that we can do this just with integers in a way, just whole numbers in a way that does not involve any fractions of any kind. Uh, I don't know how to do that. I mean, it, it's not confusing to me. So it's confusing to beginners, but you know, sometimes I have to think that it's good for beginners to suffer a little bit. I mean, why not? We all have to do it at some point. So you see, it's just like, it's the same tempo and everything is the same. You see, I don't care if I play a wrong note. It doesn't matter, okay? Because all I care about is really just one, two, three, one, 
two, three. Triplets is the one that makes sense. That's because it has to do with babies. So people like babies, you know, I don't know. Babies to me, it's like, I don't know. I think all babies are basically alike. I don't know why people get so excited about babies. Uh, triplets is just, yeah, you got three babies that are identical. That's, that's all babies, okay? If you can do what I'm doing right now, okay, you can play music. Even according to normal classical definitions of playing, you can do it better than 99% of people. You could do it better than 99% of, I, I'm, I'm going to say, of, of people who are in school studying to be professional musicians. I think you can do it better because 99% of them cannot do what I just did. I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe I'll, I'll have to open up a school that teaches core music at some point. Uh, I don't know if that would be allowed in the normal, uh, the normal system of higher education. I think that they would not allow it. Why not quadruplets instead of sixteenths? That's what I would ask as a beginner. Yes, that's that's a good question. Um, in core music, see, in classical music, uh, what 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 would happen? I'm glad you brought this up because I think this is relevant. It's a, to help you understand the difference between classical music and core music. In classical music, if a student asks the teacher why, why, why sixteenths instead of quadruplets, the teacher will freak out. Okay, they will later that night they will go on one of the piano teacher Facebook groups and they will ask. So a student asked me this, how would you explain it? What would you say? And they would get 132 replies, explain, some of which are, will be quite lengthy explanations and some of which, yeah, some of which will be very strange. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, why not quadruplets instead of sixteenths, twins instead of eighths? Yeah, right. Um, and, and probably some teachers will say that they do. They'll say, they'll say, oh, that's a great idea. Let's call them twins instead of eights. I think this is a distraction. If, if, if I, as a core music teacher, had a student who asked that, I would say, I, I, would, I, I, would, I, would, I would, at first, I'd probably try to ignore the question, um, and I would tell them, if they, if they could somehow manage to ask this question while practicing, okay, um, I, I'm presuming that they would have to stop practicing in order to ask the question, in which case I would say you're wasting our time right now because the lesson is going to is only a finite amount of time and it's very expensive. And this is very precious time because what you're doing in the lesson is something that you can't do on your own because you don't have somebody like me watching over your shoulder as you're practicing on your own. So why don't you shut your mouth and continue practicing? That's what I would say uh, as a core music teacher. So you can go faster. also do is you can then you can if you want you can lower the tempo and you can do two you can do three notes per click okay so you would drop your arms um, on the keyboard once every click now in classical music the teachers were going to get really upset about this because they're gonna they're gonna have they're gonna say something like well what you're doing is not stylistically correct what you're doing is not how so and so played it what you're doing is not how my teacher told me to play it what you're doing is not whatever 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 they're gonna have a whole long list of reasons why I am somehow committing some sort of atrocity in in playing it the way I'm playing it um, I had a te uh, there was a teacher on the Facebook group I posted I wrote a very lengthy article and demonstration. I, I did a video demonstration of how to play a Bach invention, and I, I, 
I spent so much time on it. I analyzed it, all the harmony and everything, and I, I wrote it out. It was very, very detailed and really explained a lot of, of the, this kind of thing and, and deeper stuff than this. And I, I posted the video and I was like, I, as I did it, I said, I knew, I knew it was a mistake to post the video. But, in in that venue at least i mean i i i knew it was going to be a mistake i knew it was going to just do the wrong thing and and sure enough you know somebody i mean well many people replied to that and one of them just this comment that i always remember is like if it, someone said if 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 i had a student playing like that i would run screaming from the room and that's when i that's when i realized that this is that there's a fundamental difference here between music and core music that we're doing different things that this is a different project it's a different art form it has different different goals it's not about the same thing and that's that's taken me some time to come to terms with because you know core music when i discovered it it was like i i said this is going to help me play music and in my opinion, it did help. I think it did help. Um, but I don't think that it's, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's right for musicians. I think that if you're a musician, you probably, probably should stick to music. It might be, might be your thing, might be a little bit more, uh, might be a little bit more congruent with the, with the way that you look at the world. If you're interested in trying something totally different, like the opposite of music, then maybe core music would be for you. Now you can go really fast, okay? You see, all I care about is that the arms are dropping on the keyboard once per click. That's it. Okay. And someone's going to say, well, Michael, this sounds nothing like what, it, what it's supposed to be. And, uh, you know, I never said it was going to. It's really good to go up to like the, the highest number, okay, which is 208, and do the same thing. Okay. See, it's not hard if you're do if it's hard to do it. Okay. See, one one rule in core music is that if it's if it's difficult, then it's wrong. If if there's two choices and one of them is easier than the other, then the easier one is automatically the right one. That's the rule. It's that's one of our uh, founding principles. It's like in in our Ten Commandments. That's like the first commandment. Out of out of um, out of our in our in our one commandments. Okay, I don't know if we have other commandments. I haven't gone that far yet. Okay, any any other questions? Uh, any any questions right now? I think I covered. I think I covered the really important stuff. Um, this is the basics of it. Okay, like this is this will solve. This is this is going to solve. I I, I I could go into other. I don't want to get too confusing here. Um, maybe I should risk getting confusing i think i possibly i don't know if i should this is the time for that um does anybody have any questions i'll i'll, I'll just get confusing i think it might be good uh so the thing is is that there's in music it's like there's things like harmony and okay so in music in classical music you've got um dynamics you have now in this in Bach, there's really no dynamics. You didn't really write dynamics very often, and so that's really possibly a bad example. Now in Mozart, let's see what we got here. This is Mozart. He was a little kid. He wrote all these sonatas when he was like four years old. That's really amazing. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't really writing sonatas when I was four years old. Um, I don't know how he did that. I think he must have had. Somebody set up the computer for him because I couldn't do that when I was four. Um, so let's find, so let's find, you know, so, so right, so dynamics, okay? Now, in, 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 in music, it's like, let me see if I can find a good example. You've got things like, um, there's like, it says forte, okay? And it says piano. Okay, so you see, like, you see this is F, that means forte, okay? And P, it means piano, okay? Now in music, those what those things mean is forte means loud and piano means soft. In chord music, they don't really mean anything. It's, it's really up to your interpretation what it means. So, but... 
let's say that it means something. So look. So, okay, forte. Okay, forte is, let's say, that's going to be louder somehow. So it's like, see, there's like three beats in the measure. It said three, four. That was the time signature. That means it's going to be three beats in the measure. So it's like one, two, three, the one. Okay, like one, two, three, one. I'm not counting. It sounds like I'm counting, but that's not what's happening. All I'm doing is just, I'm just using the words one, two, three, one. I'm just using those words to keep track of, of the number of clicks. Okay, I'm not counting anything. See, the counting, the counting is done by my body, like as I'm as I'm playing, okay. There's three beats in the measure, so there's a total of, so it's like, dun, two, dun, dun, okay? One, two, three, four. There's a total of four clicks. One, two, three, When I say it out loud, I'm, all, I'm not going to say four. I'm going to say one, two, three, one, always. Okay, And I'm never going to do what I just did right there. That's counting. That's what musicians do. I was only doing that because I was speaking and I wasn't playing. Okay, When I'm playing, when I'm doing music, I'm never, ever going to count. I'm never going to go one, two, three, one. Never going to do that. It will never happen. Okay, It's always one, two, three, one. Okay, That's not counting. Totally different, completely different. One, two, three, one. Okay. There's four of those things. Now you see, like, it says forte. Okay, so I'm just going to do four beats forte. Okay. And what happens right there, next one, it goes, it says piano. It says, there's a little P, okay? So it's like, and then forte again, okay? So you see what I did on that one measure? So how many beats we have here? So it's like one, two, three, four. Same thing again, we have four beats, okay? One, two, three, four, okay? So piano is it's gonna be like that. It's just the same thing as forte, except it's just you don't you don't do it as much. Okay, it's just less. So how many so what do we have? We have like one, that's forte, okay? One, two, okay. So like if you just look at those two beats, one, two, okay? So like just like what I just did, it's like one, two. So one, two, okay, and then you have one two, three, one, okay? One, two, three, one. And that's that's how you do it. It's just one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. So it doesn't matter, because it's like, if in normal music, in music, okay, when you look at something like this, you're gonna see that it's like, there's like, it has like, eighth notes and there's gonna be like one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever notes in that measure. But that's not how it is in core music. In core music it's just three beats in the measure. That's what it's that's what it means when it says three, four at the beginning. Okay? See? It says three. So it's only three. That's it. There's not six notes in the measure. Look at some of these measures here. Look at this. Like look what we got here. Look. See this, I can't, hold on, oh, okay, that's not, I'm not going to show you that part, because I can't get it on the page, 
uh, let me show you this. Part. Let me show you this part here. Okay, see, look at that. Look how those many notes there are there. Oh no. Okay. Look. See, there's like a million. Look at that. A million notes. No, that's the musical way of looking at it. We're not doing music here. We're doing core music. In core music, there's still only three. Okay, just still only three. So you got like one, two, three, one, two, three. See, it's it. That's all there is, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm not counting. One, two, three, one. Okay? That's all there is. It's the easiest thing in the world. So at all times, you're doing that. You're, you're just ensuring that you've got... All, it's like, look at this. Look at this kind of thing. So in music, people really freak out about this. Like beginners will freak out about this. And they'll say, oh, I'm bad at rhythm. You see this? Look at that. What is going on here? It's like, it doesn't even line up. It's like, how do you even deal with that? This is like... I, I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you about that. There's still only three beats in each measure, okay? So it's like one... Two, three, one, two, three. That's it. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now there's this guy on one of the piano groups on Facebook. I don't want to say his name because it's just like, I don't know. But um, he has a name. It has several parts to it. And... If, if you if you hang out on these groups, you, you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, and and he he challenged me a couple times to to play to demonstrate some of my practice techniques. And we had this battle that went on for for ages. And this was back in uh, this is three years ago. It was at the beginning of 2018. And and I was just. I was up all hours of the night, like every night in January and February, I think, uh, just fighting with this guy. And I, 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 made, I made several hours of videos of myself practicing to, to demonstrate what I was saying. And that was, I don't know if it was a, a good thing to do. I mean, the thing is, is that like you can't fight with some people. It's just not possible because they don't, they're not interested in arriving at the same destination that you're trying to arrive at. Okay. So in the way that the, like the way in my opinion the way it should work is that if you're if you want to have a discussion about something if you want to arrive at truth then you kind of both are going to be like like you're you're both going to be like you're going to you're just going to you're just going to try to sort it out and you're going to try to agree on, on things like definitions like you're going to agree on what problem David knows this guy yeah he's he's well known and the, but this is not, he, he wasn't interested in that, okay? So he was, what he was mostly interested in was taking my, my several hours of, of footage and, and just using that to prove his own case about how I wasn't, uh, wasn't, and, 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 you know, he was saying I was a troll because he could see, like, he could see that I, I that the stuff I was saying, like, the stuff I was writing, like, the way I was analyzing music, he could see was very intelligent and, like, but, but like, you know, that's, that some people just, they're not open to that. So I try not to fight with anybody anymore. Okay. If you're not, and this is, this is why I'm saying that this, what I'm doing is core music. It's not music because I don't, I have no interest in fighting with musicians because musicians are just going to want to fight. They're going to be extremely threatened by everything I'm saying right now. If they think that I'm doing music, because this is everything that I'm doing is the opposite of music. Yeah, so that's um, that's why I call it core music because I think it it just makes it clear that I'm not not open for this is not open for debate. Okay, it, we can debate it on as core music if you think there's a better way to do core music. Then I'd love to hear it, but this is not this is I'm not claiming this is a better way to do music. I I can't say that. Uh, I don't really agree with the aims of music. So. Uh, what else? I think, I think, you know, we, we've been going for about an hour, I think, right? Almost. Um, well, I'm probably almost running out of space because I'm recording this at the same time. Oh, no, I'm not, actually. I think, I think, does anybody have any questions 
I would love to answer any questions if there's any questions here because I've really if if you if you are a crazy person and you and you think that maybe I would like to you know you're thinking maybe I that you would like to be a musician and you would like to to incorporate this into your music practice I've given you the tools that will enable you to totally transform everything you're doing and basically solve all your problems but I understand that maybe it's not necessarily in the most practical form because I've just kind of blitzed through a lot here and you don't necessarily understand how it all fits together. Um, there are some people also, you know, I made a yoga video uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago, two months ago, I don't know when it was. I, I don't even know. And for, about Corman Yoga. And Corman Yoga, we have like, um, I, I had this disclaimer. I was like, if you are, you know, don't try this at home. Okay. Like you'd be stupid to do this. It's a comedy video. Okay. So it's not a yoga video. It's not an exercise video. And that's just how it is. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be, I don't want to be responsible for anybody that thinks that I'm, I'm putting out an exercise video. Like I'm some kind of qualified yoga teacher. I'm not really qualified yoga teacher. I'm a qualified Corman yoga teacher. Again, there's a difference there. Um, I, I invented the school of Corman yoga and I authorized myself as the sole teacher. I have a certificate. It's really impressive. My laptop battery is going to die. Okay. Uh, have I dealt with people who can't play quarter notes in time with the metronome? Yeah, well, of course, you know, people can't play quarter notes. Look, everybody can do it. Okay. It's just a matter of just like, come on, stop whining and do it. Okay. The reason you can't play quarter notes in time with the metronome is because you're not willing to do it. It's because you're, you're fixated on something else. You're trying to do something else. It's just like walking. Like, can you walk in time with a metronome? Of course, anybody can do that. If you can't do that, well, what if I play music that has the same exact beat as the metronome? Can you walk in time with that? Yes, of course. So like, get out of your head, like just do the thing that you know you can do. And if you can't, then spend time doing it. Like you have to spend time. So spend, you know, you have serious psychological problems if you really can't do that after just like, you know, let's say work on it for 10, 15 minutes. And if you can't figure it out by then, you have serious problems because that's extremely basic. Okay, so you probably, maybe I should have a list of therapists that I could recommend. That might be a good idea because I think you're probably not ready for the core music exercises yet. I think we'll call it quits here because I don't, this is my, my laptop battery is going to die. Thanks everyone for joining me. This is, this has been, uh, this has been Michael Corman production and uh, this, this is, it's good to, to talk about this stuff. So I hope that this will inform your core music practice. And I hope that it might, as you're doing your music practice, might give you a couple other things to think about. And maybe you might think that it's possible that the grass is greener somewhere else because, you know, music, uh, you know, especially, you know, these days music seems to be canceled. So, but you know, sometimes I still hear it. Okay, uh, I have had some, I have had some, I don't know what that is in reference to. Okay. Okay, thanks, thanks everyone. Okay, have a good night. <laughs>